Let me explain to you the logic oh, no. of a Tennessee fan, a South Carolina fan, a Florida fan. Let me explain to you the thought process here. Did you say the logic? Our team, okay. this, is their, this is their logic. Our team is bad. Mm. It, we're not any good. And by saying that to you, Georgia fan, I think that I'm insulting you because you schedule a bunch of bad teams, meaning my team. Me. This is the kind of backwards people that we have to deal with as Georgia fans, and we're going to tell you how to deal with those folks today on the Locked On Bulldogs podcast. You are Locked On Bulldogs, your daily podcast on the Georgia Bulldogs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome back, everybody. This is Locked On Bulldogs, part of Locked On Podcast Network. He is Daniel. I am Clint. And together... We make locked on bulldogs. Oh, look at that. That's how it works. Uh, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel.com slash locked on. More on them in a moment. But Daniel, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, the logic, and, mm-hmm. and I dare say the term logic. Heavy air quotes there. The heaviest of air quotes. I've never used those. Mm-hmm. They're more like like just griffin claws that are just <laughs> tearing things as they come down. Big pointy teeth. <laughs> yes, that's, that's right. Like. Uh, we are talking Tennessee fan, Alabama fan. South Carolina fan, uh, Kentucky fan hasn't chimed in yet. Which more respect to you, Kentucky fan? I'm, I'm all Kentucky here. I'm fans sure are looking for a way to get John Calipari out of town without without saying we want John Calipari out of town. Every single time he finds a way just to weave in that. By the way, Mike White like, building something go. in Athens. <laughs> Every I'm not time. sure if you've had a peek we're at that talking, yet. We're talking about the stupidity of logic that is rival fan bases. We're going to talk about three things today. We're going to talk about how stupid they are, how nonsensical they are, and how they need to go away. This is this mm. is what we're talking about. I don't that know sounds what, like one thing, but I believe it'll be three by the time we get to the end. I heard that you said, Daniel, is you're going to give the people coping mechanisms of how to interact with. Well, these, we got to deal with. Families. We got to deal with these things. Yeah, we have, we to. have to. We have to deal with it, and so yes, there are, there are several ways that we can. But let's just again, let's review the logic. The logic is that um, Tennessee's not going to be very good. Well, this if, year, if Joe gets his stuff together, because because their quarterback is a big pile of dumpster, yep. and we've been saying that on this podcast for months, and. It's hap- we're happy to know that Tennessee fans agree with us, Thanks that they listening. are a cupcake. That is great. We're excited about that. We are. Um, also, South Carolina is terrible. Now, just to be clear, that terrible South Carolina team gave Tennessee an ace whooping like the likes of which I've never seen before the, last the year. The that is just the possessions in the second half that go yeah. touchdown. So touchdown. there's another touchdown. cupcake touchdown. Touchdown. that, again— destroyed your team last year when you had everything to play for um florida we're also a terrible team but our coach Mm -hmm. is a home run hire so if you give him a hundred years he's gonna build something he'll be dead and therefore we'll have a chance to be good again like that's just this is the logic. All of these teams are so excited about the fact that they're bad because Again, they have no hope of beating Georgia. They have no hope of competing with us. The only schools that have hope of competing with Georgia reside in places like Columbus, Ohio, Mm -hmm. and schools that Georgia has no chance of playing in the uh, in the regular season schedule. These these schools, the only way they can take a shot at Georgia, yes is by degrading themselves but they're more than happy to do that just so that they can feel like they got in a free shot at the king well to be fair daniel tennessee from what i understand tennessee does not have access 
to the national level of recruits like skill is part of that building so it's really unfair that your cupcake schedule is there georgia because we as tennessee don't have access to all this newly nil free agent type recruiting oh wait a second is that you how have, it works? That's not how that works. You have access to it. So if you want to say <clears throat> your your schedule is cupcake and it's trash, um, also you have top three recruiting classes every single year for the past seven years. Um, but it's unfair because we don't get to make our schedule and also you steal all the recruits that we want. Yeah, to be fair, they don't have access to many of those recruits that they want because Kirby comes in and says – Access denied. This, this is not. mine and no longer yours. Your security okay. clearance no longer is valid here. You, we're not going to let that you email in. password ain't going to – it's not going to fix itself. It's not going to do revoked. it. Let me just ask you, Clint. Sure. Will Tennessee go undefeated against the three cupcakes on Georgia's schedule, Florida, South Carolina, and Kentucky? Will Tennessee be undefeated against those schools which – Tennessee fans okay. believe unequivocally okay. are absolute trash. They'll be undefeated against those three schools this year, correct? Well, see, here's the deal, because I already little scared Tennessee ball. They're, they have to go to the swamp, Daniel. Well, it's a road State. game. It's a road game. Okay. You wouldn't know anything about going to the swamp. No. No. One of the don't. toughest atmospheres in all of college football, all to the college. swamp. Okay, South Carolina, by the way, just real quick. Listen, just – Listen to the words as you say them. You, you listen to your own words. This is my question to you. Um, South Carolina, uh, how about A&M? How about Kentucky? Like, like I, I get it. You, you want to claim all these things. but no, They ain't going to be 3-0 and against those, those three teams. I'll tell you that right now. They will not be 3-0 and against South Carolina, Florida, and Kentucky. They might be 1-2 and against those three teams. And yet, when Georgia... Who doesn't schedule those teams? No, they are they, scheduled for us. They are scheduled for us. Okay. When Georgia has those teams on the schedule, all of a sudden Georgia is everything that's wrong with college football. I'll tell you this. Georgia is everything that's wrong with college football from a rival fan base's perspective. And we'll be happy to take that title. Because, again, Daniel, it's almost like there's a new standard in college football. Uh, well, that's interesting. We're, we're going to come back after this. Uh, but first, FanDuel. FanDuel, FanDuel is the you most. You love to see it. I love to see it because already the lines are coming out. We got games set. Oh. We got South Carolina, mm -hmm. the aforementioned South Carolina playing Georgia. Three thirty kick schedule. announced. Kick. We're gonna love mm -hmm. that. Get those lines out there. Go get early self lines right now. There are early game lines. You get go. Them yourself. FanDuel. It's not as good as watching college football. No. But betting on college football is the next best thing it's to watching next, college football. And you could do so. And you could while do it right we're now. in this abject desert wasteland of no news mm -hmm. and, and they won't be news, we have a whole host of recruits coming into Georgia. I understand that. But this is the best you can get. Go over there, fanduel.com slash locked on. Uh, for right now, no sweat first bet, fanduel. No matter what you do, if you put money in, you make a bet, it doesn't come back, they're going to give you $1,000 in bonus bets back to you. Fanduel.com slash locked on. It's a great place. It's a place that Daniel and I trust the most. It's official Locked On Bulldogs and Locked On Podcast Network sports book. Get over there right now. FanDuel.com slash Locked On. Terms and conditions apply. Clint, um, third segment, we're talking about what to do with these people. Yeah. But True let's fans, talk. Keep, keep around a little third segment listeners. We're going to give you some, some psychological tricks on how to cope or how, how to deal with these <laughs> That's right. They're less complicated than you think, the <laughs> psychological tricks, just to be honest. They're very simple. Stick around for the third segment. Um, uh, okay, let's talk, though, about Kirby. We don't have to tell you what we think about the eight-game schedule versus the nine-game schedule. No. Because the boss has already told you what to think about the eight-game schedule versus the nine-game schedule. He's waiting. He said... This is the dumbest thing in the world to talk about. Why am I why are you asking me questions about this? It doesn't matter. It just doesn't just Kirby Smart believes when you put games on my schedule. Uh -huh. What is he supposed to do? I will prepare my players okay. to win those games. Oh, that's interesting, Daniel. So now maybe 
maybe those games will come against non-SEC teams. Maybe they'll come sure. against teams from the SEC West. Maybe sure. they'll come against teams from the SEC East. Maybe those games will be, I don't know, a game against Spencer Rattler in South Carolina where all we have to do to win the game is not give up 60-plus points. Maybe they'll come against Alabama when all we need to do to win the game is have Alabama miss a field goal. And then we'll win the game at home. Maybe any any number of teams could be scheduled for Kirby Smart, and he doesn't care at all. This is this is the lunacy of this used to be the trick, and and kind of we're starting to do it in Georgia fan. I, I encourage you not to do this with quarterback redshirting. We used to do this all the time with timeline mm-hmm. of this guy goes here and this mm-hmm, does here, mm-hmm, and he mm-hmm. graduates and goes to the NFL, and then this guy pops up. Or how about you take Kirby's method, which is just to say, I don't care. I'm going to look at the field. And the guy that's throwing the best balls to the best receivers and getting completions and making the offense hum, he gets to play. And whatever else happens after that. Whatever, whoever goes where, whoever transfers what, whoever feels which way. My job as coach is to put the best product on the field, the best players on the field. And so you could schedule whoever you want. I don't care. I'll pick up the phone and talk to anybody. Look at his schedule. Look at the Notre Dames. Look at the Clemsons. Look at all of those he's already done throughout the year. Okay. Mm -hmm. In In his tenure. At, at UGA. And it's going to be the same thing. So he clearly doesn't care. All of you are talking about this. Kirby is not. And we're not talking about this guy. We're talking about your lunacy about the schedule. And Georgia fan, we're trying to encourage you. We're going to get third segment. We're going to give you some things. But this, he has said, I don't care. Eight, nine, 10, 12. You can just make me, you can take the top 10 preseason and line them all up and make me play them. And guess what? I'll prepare the guys to do that. We just play and then try to win the games that we play, and then when when the season's over, if we've won uh-huh. enough of the games that we play, we'll get to play more games and compete for championships. But what about that time that Kirby was talking at the end of the year rankings? How it wasn't fair that he needed to get into the playoff because it's not fair the schedule that he did wasn't the same as other people, and you have to take that into. What about the time that he put together a music video about how his team deserved to be in? Oh, was that not him? This no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We confused that with Nick Saban. Yes, correct. Um, Kirby shuts his mouth and goes to work. Definitively, he he just goes out and beats your team. That's really all he does. And next time your team beats him, Uh please come and chat with us about it. But all he does is go and beat your team. That's it. So, he's on a winning streak against every single one of your team. Whatever team you cheer for. Okay, go. Kirby's on a winning streak against That's you. That's interesting. It's That's interesting, interesting, isn't it? It is. Now, but Stetson um, Bennett was one and two versus Alabama. Which one? Say, Which one? Say more. Are the two as important as the one? Because the one's really important. Because the one seemed more important, if I'm honest. Unless you want to change, unless you want to change the metrics, which by all means. Oh, move the bar. When you you have a man who is, who is just, you're watching him pass away in front of you. (laughs) And you're just trying desperately to hold on to the past. You need to move the bar in order to, it's called coping. It is. And um, that's what we're going to get into in the third segment. Georgia fans, you don't have to cope. No. You just don't. You don't have to do it. We will We'll give you some, some strategies and some tips in, coming up for the 199 in the third segment. Tips and strategies on what to do with – I was going to put something like a lunatic or a delusional or a, a de- detached from reality fan, but I could just say Tennessee fan, Alabama fan, Ole Miss fan. Uh, oh, Old Miss in the chat? Did Old Miss enter the chat? <laughs> Old Miss enter in the chat. Daniel. I'm just, Holy jeez. Well, because they're on our schedule. And so if they're on our schedule, cupcake schedule. That's right. It includes their team. absolute trash team. Um, okay. Cupcakes. So, Daniel, start us off. What is one when we engage or interact with these people? Well, Georgia fan 199, first of all, yeah. thanks for being here. Happy to have you. Um, uh, if you. You know this, and we can be honest about this Please. here on the show. I think we've driven away all the Tennessee fans by now, and so we can just have an <laughs> internal chat. I am telling you definitively that is not true, but yes, continue. Internal anyway. chat here. Georgia fans, we, we have been this guy before. 
So, like, we should know how to interact with this guy because let's just call it what it is. We've been this guy before. And do you know what the defining characteristic of this guy is? Please. The quote-unquote that guy that you do not want to be. He or she refuses to live in the present moment. Okay. Okay. Some people are insistent on living in the future. Florida fan. Billy Napier is going to turn this thing around. Just give him enough time, give him enough players. Tennessee fan, Josh Heupel is the savior of the program, and the trajectory is we won 10 games last year. We won the Orange Bowl last year. Uh, Everything's moving the right direction. These fan bases are insistent on living in the future, and so the only way that they can deal with the fact that presently they are nowhere near your team is they have to just take random cheap shots and then project forward and look forward into the future. Some fan bases, on the other hand, like to live in the past. Okay, same now, this is, this is your Alabama fan. This is your classic Alabama fan who um, insists that their team has not fallen off a cliff, insists yeah. that the dynasty is not over, that it is, in fact, Maybe. alive and well. Things are going great. In our quarterback situation is great. The offensive coordinator hire that we made this offseason is fantastic. It's not like the last several coordinators that Nick Saban has hired have all been abject failures. All of them. It's not like that's true because remember when we won that 2020 Mickey Mouse championship that didn't really matter because nobody played a full schedule. Remember that? Hey. We were very – remember – that we were very good pretty recently. These are your Alabama fans. Georgia fans, we were those fans. We were the future thinking, future forecasting fans that refused to live in the present. Georgia fans, the way that you deal with these fan bases is you just simply smile Mm -hmm. and you live in the present moment. It is a privilege to be the guy that people are taking the cheap shots at on Twitter. It is an absolute privilege to be that because, one, it has absolutely no impact on the game, meaning it has no impact on the outcomes of any of these games. None of the preseason rankings or point spreads or whatever have any actual impact on one team's ability to beat another team on the field. And two... It only means that your team, my team, our team, Mm -hmm. is better than all the other teams. You are now the envy of college football, and you don't have to look into the future. Dylan Riola, great. We're excited about that. Best recruiting class that Georgia's ever seen coming in in 2024. More five stars on the way. All of that is fantastic. We're very excited about it. Back-to-back national championships. We've got things in the past that we are very excited about. Things that we can hang our hat on. That Keeler Ringo pick six. Mm. All of those things are great. But Georgia fans, you can have both of those, but you don't need them. Because what you have right now is the 2023 Georgia Bulldogs football team yes. that's um, doing summer conditioning right now and is going to open fall camp in a couple months. And that team is going to be better than all the teams on its schedule. Okay. Live in the presence. I love this is great. This is fantastic. I want to give you, we're going to do a little, a little case study, Daniel. Oh. Case study. All right. Now, science. This, uh, we're going to try to do science. I'm, I'm going to go uh, Christian Adams over on YouTube commented to us that Kirby's not great. He could only win at UGA, Alabama, or Ohio State. He would get his backside kicked if he was coaching at an ACC school or a lower tier SEC school. Now, this is a case study of an Alabama fan who clearly wants to talk about the GOAT. Um, He didn't say so, but it's clear as day that this is what's happening. Here's a deal with this person. Now, Mm -hmm. in your head, you just have to, you you have to have facts. Facts don't help these types of people, okay? they don't no, do anything. these people but, don't need the facts. They, they don't want but them. But inside your head, okay, mm-hmm. let me let me go, let me use the logic. You just have to tell yourself that you're dealing with a logical person. It's like dealing with a child. When it, emotions of a five-year-old don't affect my emotions, they shouldn't because they don't have any ability to do otherwise, right? Think of the same way. So, you know, a, it's a little guy dad pod, like, a little dad pod interjection well, there on the Lockdown <laughs> Bulldogs podcast. Go over there, dad pod guys on YouTube. Um, this is Nick Saban's coaching career at not Alabama. 
Oh. Michigan State, six and five. Michigan State, six and six. Seven and five. Six and six. Nine and two. Okay. Uh, LSU. So he got his backside kicked. He did. At Michigan State, a at- lower tier, not even ACC um, school. So put that sink in. Mm-hmm. LSU, eight and four, 10 and three, eight and five, 13 and one, and then nine and three. So okay. again, worse record. Mm-hmm. Alabama, two and six to begin. Uh, and then everything started happening in Alabama because, again, right now, currently, he is the GOAT, understandably. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't until he got to Alabama and the whole state had nothing better to live for than college football. Oh. And so dumped their soul and, and, and everything into it to get that. And that's what he has. But, again, your coach couldn't have success. Except, and don't even talk to me about Miami Dolphins, 15 and 17, no. except for at Alabama. So inside he, your own head. Also... Thanks. Like, here we go. Just this so is clear. Keep going. I keep, cheer. This isn't coping. Uh-huh. I cheer. Yes. That's this shirt doesn't say "Go uh-huh. you Kirby Smarts." No. It doesn't. My team. If if you're not clear, just look at the very top of the, like the, my team is Kirby Smart is is Kirby Smarts team right now. Right. But it's the Georgia Bulldogs. And so if you're telling me that we're the kind of program Mm -hmm. that can take a quote unquote mediocre coach, which that's just, it's funny. It's funny that you say that. If we're that type of program that can take an average coach and turn him into a two time national championship odds on favorite to go back to back to back. Oh, no. Um, Thanks. Thanks. Because we're the standard of college football. Uh-huh. We are the standard. We are where the grass is greener. We are the place that everyone wants to be. All of them five stars. And you live in Alabama. That's hard. So those are the realities at play that I see from your comment. Here's here's the comment. There was a, there was a Friends episode way back when Ross is dating a, a beautiful woman. And somebody says, I bet she's just playing a game to see how the nerdiest, ugliest guy she could she could get with. And Ross's comment was, cool, fine by me. More power to her. <laughs> this is this is kind of what you're saying to us and Kirby. Like, you've won back to back without a great coach. Ha. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Number one, factually incorrect. He's a great coach. Even if it if it was correct. That would honestly be more flattering. So thank it you. Be. It would be. So that's this is your coping mechanism. This is just again next week. Back. The yeah. comment will be okay. Georgia's a trash program. The only reason they could win back to back national championships because they have an elite coach like Kirby Smart. But that comment is coming. But recruiting as well. It's just the players that do it. Well, it's just because you get the players that's and. It. That's, you know, it's unfair. It's unfair. Tennessee doesn't have access to this. I don't players. have access. Access denied. I wish, I wish my key reader would work, but the fob is not clicking mm-hmm. through. Uh, this has been Locked On Bulldogs, part of Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. We will see you all next time. See ya.